Hey everybody, it's Brad. And I'm Krista. With the Big Family Homestead. And today, this video is for one reason. We, we realize that there's a lot of um, confusion going around with the whole homeschooling thing. And a lot of people are wanting to, you know, figure out, is homeschooling for me, for my kid? Um, should I move forward with it, with all the, the pandemic stuff going on? And so Krista and I, more Krista than I, have been homeschooling for 18 years now. Mm -hmm. And we thought we should go ahead and just give you a, a broad overview of how to get started for those who are like, yes, I wanna go forward, but also possibly a, um, maybe even a, uh, I don't know, not a warning, but heads up if, you, if you're just trying to toe in the water to see if it's for you. And um, with that, I'm the keeper of the list, right. and I'll try to kind of keep things going. Uh, <laughs> but Mama's going to largely talk here about homeschooling and, and basically how to get started. So first of all, tell everybody who you are, what you've been doing. <laughs> I, my name is Krista, and um, I have been homeschooling our seven children um, for the last 18 years. So it's been a journey. I should say on and off for the last 18 years, most, mostly for the last 18 years. So, Well, and I will say right out of the gate, I'm going to go ahead and toot her horn and the horn of, of my children. Uh, Cause right now, you know, people go, well, you, do you get the same kind of quality education out of homeschooling? And I would say it absolutely depends on what you put into it. Right. What you put into it. Mm -hmm. We've got <clears throat> two sons, who are both in the army. Mm -hmm. One fixes helicopter engines for the big, 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 you know. The Blackhawks and Chinooks. And that's cool. Mm -hmm. Another one is actually, he went in for army intelligence mm -hmm. and uh, our daughter Claire would have graduated as the um, uh, valedictorian, valedictorian mm -hmm. had she stayed where she was. Had they granted her credits. Yeah, that's a mess. Mm -hmm. Which this is going to help you right. fight these battles. Right. Um, but just to give you an idea that, yeah, you can get a good education. You can go to college. Claire went to college. You know, you can do all these things with homeschooling. And so they're horn tooted. Thank you. Mama rocks it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, talk a little bit about um, determining whether or not you should be a homeschool mom, whether your kid should be homeschooled. Yeah, it, having a good relationship with your child is is really important. Um, if you guys butt heads a lot or have a lot of tension between you, um, it might not be a good fit. But then again, maybe this will help build a better relationship with, between the two of you. Um, you have to have a bit more patience than uh, the average bear, I would say. Um, yeah. A lot of deep breaths happen during homeschooling <laughs> when when you're talking about a certain lesson and then somebody asks a question that's completely unrelated to that lesson it's like okay let's focus let's focus let's refocus um yeah you have to have a bit more patience um than normal i suppose well it's a different kind of relationship it is a different kind of relationship because you go from mom, mom to teacher, teacher. Um, but they're the same person because as a mom, you are still teaching your child, you know, how to behave, how to, you know, exist in society and, and do life things, you know, do laundry, clean up their toys. And, you know, depending on how old your child is, you know, but you're still that teacher, but it changes from life skills teacher to book learning teacher. Mm -hmm. So... Well, yeah, and it generally takes a little bit of time for any parent or, or kid to get adjusted. Yes, yes, you you definitely there is there is a routine that is definitely important in um, in homeschooling. You know, if you just go willy nilly and there's no, um, I know I probably skipped a couple of steps. Oh, we'll now. come back. We'll okay. Come back. Okay. Yeah. He's got the list. So I'm just thinking of, okay. So there is definitely a routine that you want to set, um, waking up at, you know, whenever you like, and then just kind of 
flopping your way through the day. Right. And and then the child doesn't actually know what's expected. You know, if you set standards and set boundaries, then it will make your day a lot easier. Well, and we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves with the yeah, scheduling. Sorry. <laughs> but I felt that I felt like that was important in the whole um, uh, determining whether or not it was going to work. Well, well, them. it is important, right? But just to speak to what you're saying about the kind of flopping your way through the day, one thing you got to keep in mind with all of what you're doing with homeschooling, absolutely everything, is you're not you 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 got to understand you're preparing these kids for life. You're preparing them to be adults. You're teaching them to be adults. Exactly. And in regular life, you can't just go flopping your way through the day deciding, oh, will I wear pajamas now or or will I, um, you know, not do anything for four hours and then I'll come and do work for 10 minutes. That's not how life works for no, it, regular people. So you've no. got to understand in, in this, you're preparing them to be adults. Right. You know, I don't I don't work outside the home and I have only ever worked outside the home while having children for a few short years um, a while back. But getting up, getting showered, you know, having a routine really helps personal hygiene. Right. It really helps, you know, have a having a better outlook on life. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're laying around in your pajamas all day and. It's just that's not how regular people that's not, work. No, it's not. And and I I hope I'm not I'm not trying to offend anybody by saying this, but it's it truly helps. Okay, and one other thing, and and you kind of you're like, why do you do that? Every morning, I know it's a weird thing. I make our bed every morning. She won't let me. I won't let him do it. It's it's my job. I won't even let the kids help me do it. It's like that's no, that's my thing. It just it makes me feel so much better to come in at the end of the evening. Oh, look at the beds made. There's just, order. Looks, there's order. I am not OCD. I don't think. No. I'm not diagnosed OCD. I could joke, but you're yeah. not. No, I'm really not. I just like to have things in order. Well, and that's you know? how life is. Right. You know, yeah, you have your moments of crazy and I'm going to go and run and do this or that. But but the reality is most people work a job. Yes. Or they own a business. Mm -hmm. And in that, there are things you have to do in order to be successful at that business or successful life. Right. But we're way ahead of ourselves. Sorry, now. I know. I, 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 told, I told you that I'm not good at doing these well, kinds of things. That's why I said I would try to... I know, and it's... Okay, now let's talk about whether or not you have that personality type. Right. Okay, should you even be a teacher or should you think about a K-12 kind of computer-based homeschooling where you have a computer system and a teacher somewhere else that's actually public school? Yeah. It, or even private school? Right. Those are called a virtual academy and those are really helpful for some. But hold on. I know, I know. Do you have the right mindset to do it right you really have to determine that mm -hmm. that's i think the biggest thing and for us it was a lot of prayer oh yeah lots and lots of prayer um you know and and determining what our schools were like when we started homeschooling when david was going into kindergarten we lived in florida and you know the at the time the schools in our area were not up to our standards no so we wanted more for our kids. So mm -hmm. that's why we started homeschooling. Okay. Well, let's move on. So okay. main point being determine whether or not it really is for you. Right. Pray a lot. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Now, now that let, let's say that you've gone past that and I'm, I'm happy with the fact that, yeah, we're going to move forward. Right. Um, determining laws. Right. Every state has different homeschooling laws. Some are very lax and some are very rigid. Mm -hmm. um, you have to determine, you know, if that's going to work for you. Like some states you have to keep um, daily attendance. You have to keep, um, uh, you have to make what's called a profile. And all of that is you take sections of your child's work throughout the year and you put it in a binder. Um, some states testing. require testing. Um, like, uh, the, um, the C, what is the, 
I don't even know what the California achievement test, that's what it is. Um, some states require that. Um, some states also will require a teacher assessment, uh, like a certified teacher. So you'd have to find a certified assessor or teacher in your area and have them test your child or look through your profile and sign off on some sheet of paper that you have to mail into your district. Um, some districts, some in, you know, local districts require that you send a letter of notification uh, of intent to homeschool. And then you also need to send an outline of all of the curriculum that you're going to use and you know what, the, what those curriculums cover. So that's a lot of prep work that um, some states require. But again, mm -hmm. some other states are extremely lax. Yes. Where you don't even have to tell them that you're nope. homeschooling. No. Nope. Um, but what you need to do is find out what the laws are in your state, in your county, and right. you can just Google that. Right. I was going to say, don't <clears throat> call your local school district. No, no we had them lie to us. They don't know. They will lie to you. Um, They'll say, you, you have to, to do this. You right. have to do that. And that's not the case. Go on um, there's a website called the Home uh, sorry, the Homeschool Legal Defense Association (HSLDA), mm -hmm. um, and they have all you have to do is type in what state you're in and homeschool laws, and look for that website because they will give you the accurate um, uh, homeschool laws. Now, just a second, I want to go back just real quick because. When we said they will lie to you, the schools, mm -hmm. that's not the full picture. No. Um, the the thing is this, is we've dealt with people that are in the school systems that are great, amazing people, awesome people who honestly are trying to do what's right. <clears throat> but then there are other people who either don't know what the laws are and they'll just go, oh, well, you have to do this. Right. And they, and they don't, they, they, they don't just know. don't frankly know. Right. Or secondly, we've actually dealt with principals that will intentionally lie to us because they want our kid to do X, Y, and Z mm -hmm. rather than, <coughs> excuse me, us <coughs> wanting to get <coughs> more engaged in the homeschool stuff. Right. So <coughs> you got to know what the laws are. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, okay. Yeah, that's really important. Okay. So find out what they are, mm -hmm. HS... HSLDA, <clears throat> it's Homestead, not Homestead, sorry, Homestead. Homeschool Legal Defense Association. You can actually become a member of their website and know this is not a promotion or we're not, you know, it's not paid by the HSLDA, <clears throat> um, but you can become a member so that if you are having any uh, legal issues in your local area, mm -hmm. they will help you. They come they to your help, defense. They will come to your defense. They will help you walk through this. They will even have their lawyers call the school and tell them to back off. Which so, we've had to have happen. Yes, we've had to have, we'd have, we've had to do. Um, so it's definitely worth the it's fee. It's so cheap. It is very inexpensive. Okay, so then just to round this subject out, Find out if there's paperwork that you need to do, right. um, and then you fill it out and you submit it. Right. And Sometimes. You have to, sorry. Sorry. You have to submit it by a certain time. Um, like, it's usually two weeks after the school year starts, um, the public school year starts, but you have to find that out through the website um, because every state and area is different. And what I was going to say is that sometimes you have to withdraw your child. Yes. Um, so be aware of that because they could assume that you're showing up. Like, let's say that you home you you did regular public school mm -hmm. last year, and this year you're like, well, no way, I'm not. I'm, I'm, he's coming home right. home homeschool, and you don't tell them. They can they can assume that you are it's truancy issue, mm -hmm. and they can literally send people to your house for like well checks. Right. You got to be careful, guys. Yeah. Um, just follow whatever paperwork it is that they are mm -hmm. saying you have to do, right. even though I don't feel like we should have to. It's our children. But you're going to end up in Problem City if you don't do what they're asking. Right. What he's, you have to submit a withdrawal form to the public school that is in your district. Um, and then some, some states, some, well, no, all public schools. If your child oh, is you in public school, you have to submit a withdrawal form to take them out of the public mm -hmm. school. And then if your area says that they need an, 
uh, a letter of intent to homeschool, then you need to submit mm -hmm. that as well. So there's just, there's a lot of things that go on. Like in Wisconsin, um, I really do like how the, the laws are up here. Um, it's, we just have, there's a website, you go onto the website and you say, this is, child is in this grade um, and, and they are male or female. That's it. The end. The end. Um, I do have to do that every year by a certain time. I think it's mid-October, but it's easy, easy peasy. Okay. Now, excellent. Moving on to another section here. Uh, curriculum. This is a big one, and I'm going to really try hard to keep you from getting in the weeds. Me, okay, that's going to be okay, difficult. Okay, that will be difficult. That will be difficult. But let me just say, okay, curriculum, It's it's here's the thing. There are certain standards that you're going to have to have your child meet mm -hmm. in order to go from grade to grade and to ultimately end up with a diploma, which you will issue right. uh, and is legal the same degree of legality, like for our state, is uh, to be a homeschool parent is the same legal weight as a private school. Mm -hmm. And the standards can be whatever standards we decide on, but they need to be obviously equal or better than public school. Right, right. So um, curriculum is an all-encompassing uh, methodology, books, videos, uh, materials mm -hmm. that will help you uh, teach your child subject or subjects. It can be an all-inclusive thing where you go through science and math and reading and all that kind of stuff. Or it can be I'm just picking just reading from over here and I'm taking this from over there. And it's a big topic that I'm going to try to... <laughs> so curriculum, there, picking curriculum. Picking curriculum can be a very daunting task. Uh, because there are, I would probably say, hundreds of different companies that have homeschool curriculums. Um, there's several great online curriculums. There are several book, textbook learning ones. There's the list is a mile long. Um, you, there, the, the thing is, okay. There's a website. Kathy Duffy's reviews, where she goes through all of the different curriculums and gives you her review. They are, that's a world of knowledge, or wealth of knowledge, I should say, because she's gone through it all, and then you can pick and choose what will work for your child. Um, I have, I, we've spanned the gamut. Mm -hmm. We've used Abeka books, which is a great curriculum. I'm not saying there's anything, I love these curriculums. We have used um, Seton, which is a Catholic, specifically a Catholic curriculum. Loved it. Um, there's another one called Mother of Divine Grace, which is also a Catholic curriculum. But you um, don't have to be Catholic to use it. But you don't have to be Catholic to use it. It just has a lot of Catholic throughout the curriculum. Isms. Yes. Great curriculums. I love them. I love them. When we used them years ago, I loved them. Our kids did really well with them. Um and then I started switching to other things. We did online stuff for several years. The kids really did well. Um, Alpha Omega has some amazing curriculums. Apologia has some awesome science. We're using that this year. Um, there's so many different things. Um, and it's, oh, Rod and Staff is another amazing curriculum that we really, really like. We use several of those, uh, several different things from Rod and Staff. And we use um, one that's called The Good and the Beautiful. We use lots from that as well. Um, determining. Determining what is best for you and your child, that's key. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if your child is a visual learner, you might want to do online stuff. Um, because they can see the videos, go, you know, the videos are going on and it's, and then if your child is a book learner, then you might want to look at some more stuff that comes, you know, that's more textbook style. Um, may I? Yeah. One of the cool things about homeschooling is you can custom tailor the education yes. directly to your child. Right. Because in public school, it's here's, here's what you're going to get. Every kid, 30 kids, 40 kids, 50 kids in a classroom, whatever it is, that's you're going to get what that is. And whether 
that's how your child communicates, learns, understands. Doesn't matter. Right. That's how it's going to be done. Right. With this, you can go, oh, wait a minute, you know. Um, Hope is really, really into animals and biology right now and science that's like that. Well, so we can shift and go more centric for animals and biology and stuff like that, yeah. that she's going to want to learn. Right. And yeah, you, there, you do have to learn basics and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff, but you can tailor the education by picking different things out of different curriculum. Exactly. That's that's the beauty of it. You know, if you're if your child is in public school, there is one way of them to learn and they may not get it. There's one set of curriculums that they're going to give you and or give your child and that's it. There is there's no room for let's customization. Customization, exactly. Homeschooling is definitely full of customization. Um, If you want to do family style learning, there's uh, lots of different ones that are, you know, family style learning. Um, I can't remember the one, but the one that we are using right now uh, for history and science uh, is the good and the beautiful. Mm -hmm. That is family style. It helps for, you know, interaction between the kids and kids asking different questions and then other kids are learning different from those questions that the other child is asking and it saves time it really does instead of spending four hours on different sciences for all four kids we're doing one hour of science for all four kids so it's it's a it's a huge time saver and the kids love it well and when we lived in Florida, I did some video work for a, com- a well, it's not a company, a school. It was a magnet school. And the idea of a magnet school is what can be achieved with a lot with a homeschool situation is that when you're dealing with a certain period of history, uh, then all of your lessons, whether it's a reading or whether it's math, or whether it's science, mm-hmm. or whether it's um, poetry or whatever, they all kind of go along that same thread or theme. Mm-hmm. So if you're learning about the Civil War, then all of your literature that you're reading is going to be period Civil War. Yes. Or, uh, hey, this is how they ate pemmican bread. And then you can learn some math by and fractions and, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So it allows you that freedom to do those kind of things and it reinforces it more than it's just like, okay, you're going to read Thoreau now. Right. Now you're going to be over here in 1965 politics in history. It's like, what? Right. You can right. do that. Right. You can if that's how your kid learns, but you may want a more themed approach. Right. Um, uh, the language arts that we're doing right now, it again is through the good and the beautiful. I really like this company and no, this is not a paid promotion. Um, their language arts lesson or curriculum is like that where there, it's not just reading and literature. It's also geography and art and grammar and all of those things line up together you know like hope is learning about the middle east and she's learning middle eastern art and you know the geography as well in there and it's really it's it's really interesting so picking a curriculum doesn't have to be as daunting as it has been for us right because now just google stuff but i'm gonna when i when i get done with this little thought then you just reiterate some of the curriculum ones that we've used that okay. you've liked in the past just okay. to give them so they can jot, jot, jot. Okay. But um, the idea, guys, is just that you don't have to stick with one. You can customize. Mm-hmm. But curriculum will save your e- immortal soul. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm not no. making – not like that. <laughs> no, but it will keep you sane because basically you open the book up and now as a teacher you're like – Okay, here's what I need to know. Here's what the child needs to know. Mm -hmm. It's going to save your brain. Right, right. So some of the big ones. Some of the big ones, uh, a couple of Catholic ones that we've used in the past, uh, Seton Home, um, and then there was Mother of Divine Grace. They have great ones. Um, Then there, actually, I don't even know if Mother of Divine Grace is doing anything anymore, but you can look it up. I'm sure there is some out there. Um, Then there's Abeka Books. They are fantastic. They also do an online academy thing uh, with their curriculum. There's um, 
Apologia Life Pack, which is Alpha Omega. They have several different ones. They've got an online one. They've got a book one. It, you know, they've got several different ones. Um, Apologia has some great sciences that we are absolutely in love with. Um, for older kids, they have it for younger kids, but I like, really like it for the older kids. Um, and then what we're using mainly right now is we're using the good and the beautiful for language arts, history, and science, and then, um, rod and staff. And we're also using Matthew C. That was another one I forgot about. Matthew C. They have videos that go along with each lesson. And that is super great because then it can, the kids can understand it better. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on to another topic here. Um, when you <clears throat> hit roadblocks uh, is not generally the best time to go, wait a minute, I got to reassess and do everything. Well, here's, here's, here's a help for you. There are support groups. <laughs> there are support groups in just about every town you can imagine. I mean, we live in, I'm talking podunk, nowhere, middle Central of... Central Wisconsin. Central Wisconsin, North Woods. And there are a ton of good people around here that do homeschool stuff. And they group together and they there are support groups. There are support groups. There's even support groups on Facebook uh, that, you know, go along with each curriculum. So you can ask your question about apology as science and people will help answer that. Um, you know, and that, that was together. Yeah, right. There are also local homeschool groups in everywhere. They're everywhere. Um, you just have to search them out. Talk to your local people. Talk to the library. They might know of some. Mm -hmm. um, but get involved with your local homeschool group. Um, there are some that we were participating back, participating with back in Florida, where they had uh, very qualified moms experts. that were experts in that field of whatever teaching a class and you could pay to participate for your child to participate in that class. Um, so that's, that's a huge thing. Yeah. I mean, and, and different groups are different. Mm -hmm. So, but the point is you can have access to experts. Let's say that math is not your thing. Right. Math is just not your thing. Right. And you have this group of people that, Oh, this mom is a retired physics major right <laughs> or this one is a retired this or no mom she's just really good at this right and that oh well i have a skill i can bring to to the table you know and, and then they they all share some of them will do that they'll share the information or some of them will um have a grouping where it's just you know it's 20 bucks a month per kid or whatever right. it is and that helps to pay for supplies because usually the moms are doing it uh you know for free so the, the, the fee is to keep the organization going and to, to pay for supplies and things like that and the building that they're in. Well, and that's really great for subjects like science. Oh, yeah. Where if you're dealing with any kind of chemistry or stuff mm -hmm. like that, that most people are just not, that's not the, in their wheelhouse. Right. But it's an essential part of going through the high school Right. Learning experience. Right. Well, and getting all of the supplies, the, the, the beakers and the Bunsen burners mm -hmm. and the microscopes, and that's expensive. You know, there's so many curriculums out there that are just so expensive, but it's worth it. Your child's education is worth mm -hmm. it, you know, and if you buy it, you reuse it. Keep using it over and over again for other children, and it's you know, it, it's an, an initial investment, but, you know, you can do it. Um, I, I don't like to say the word on the cheap, but you can do it. Sure. Affordably. Affordably. Thank you. That is a better. You can do it affordably. Um, the good and the beautiful, they have videos out right now. Um, I'm jumping ahead, aren't I? Oh, Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Um, science videos on the on YouTube. So they you in, if you can't do all of the experiments, they're online. You can watch them there. So. Well, you know what? Let's let's switch to that okay. point. Is that one of the other groupings we we're going to say? Is there are resources? There's resources for every subject, everything you can imagine. Yeah. And um, don't discount 
<clears throat> YouTube. No, no. YouTube is a huge resource. Um, there's another, uh, math, uh, website. Yay Math. Yay Math is an amazing YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Um, he also has his own website. Again, this is not a paid promotion. Um, he also has his own website where he is selling his algebra and geometry curriculums. curriculums and he has videos that go along with it. It's fantastic. Yay Math was probably the single biggest factor in David becoming yes. wicked math smart. Yes. Oh, yes. He because did. this yes. guy is a teacher, mm -hmm. but he communicates in a way that's really funny. Like, he'll just show up one day dressed like a Star Trek character. Right. And then everything they deal with is Star Trek things, but they're dealing with, you know, algebraic, algebraic, algebraic problems, and, yeah. problems and stuff. Mm -hmm. But he makes it understandable. Yeah. The point is, there are resources out there and don't discount the fact that YouTube is a huge source. Mm -hmm. Just be careful that you're going to a credible site so you're not learning things wrong. Right, right. You know, um, but there are resources everywhere. Yeah. Now, um, let's talk about scheduling and setting boundaries. One of your faves. One of my faves. This is, we're coming back this to This is, it. yeah, we're coming back to this. I did cover this a little bit. You have to set some boundaries you have to set some expectations it really is what it is you know expect your kids to get up at a certain time every day have them eating breakfast at a certain time every day getting dressed making their bed you know i mean i'm not so very strict about them making their bed but i do want them to make their beds you know it's just it just helps keep their rooms neater that's all but well, set expectations. Set expectations on what you want for your homeschool day. Um, it doesn't have to be down to the exact minute because, trust me, you need to learn something that I've learned over the last couple of years. And what's our word, Dad? Flexibility. What's, right. Flexible. Our word, our word is flexibility. Um, and that has that rings true in my head every day. I have to be flexible. Honestly, right now, I should be downstairs homeschooling. Um, but this other stuff came up in the afternoon when I'm free, so this needs to happen now. We Well, <laughs> another beauty of homeschooling right. is that you can uh, take advantage of whatever opportunities are in front of you. For example, um, we had to go to Minneapolis several months back mm -hmm. before the pandemic. Yeah. And um, for business stuff, and we both had to be there. Right. And so I was like, well, wait a minute. Hope is having, you know, she's really been in this biology mm -hmm. phase. She was really into into marine life at that time. Still so is, we we yeah. we took the opportunity to go to the aquarium. Yes. And we made it a, you know, an actual here's lesson plans. Let's look at things. Mm -hmm. Let's shift so that we can take advantage of what's going on in front of you right now. Right. right. And so right. it makes for a much more rich learning experience, mm -hmm. I think, then here's your box, get in your box, this is the box, and it will not change. Right. Yes. You can't You can't live in a box. Um, yes, your house is a box, but you can't live in a box when it comes to homeschooling. So, um, you know, again, set expectations and don't waffle. So, you know, well, that's okay. You can do your, mm -hmm. do your school, you know, whenever you know. You... Time to sit down at school at nine o'clock. You're raising or adults. You're raising adults, guys. It's they're they're not just kids to do whatever they want willy nilly. You have to set expectations because that will help them throughout their life to be able to set their own expectations. Yeah, and expect only what you're willing to inspect. inspect. Yes. Oh, yeah, yes. I heard that from a former boss who is, happens to be a motivational speaker. Wasn't it Zig? No, oh. Zig, Zig Ziglar. I used to work a lot with Zig Ziglar, for those of you who know. I thought he said it. Okay. He, he did not, but oh. um, it, was, it was Peter Lowe. Oh. But he was right. Yeah. Expect only what you're willing to get up off your butt and go and inspect. Right. So if you expect your child to, to do their bed, to make their bed and clean up their toys, then you better, you're go better be willing to go and look because... You may do it kids, once. Kids, I love, I love kids, but they're not always truthful. <laughs> okay. So with that, yeah. Now this one is this this one is a sticky one that we had to learn our lessons on. Ah, yeah. 
Keeping records. Now, yes. here's the deal. You have to keep good records on, on your grades mm -hmm. and achievements, mm -hmm. and especially if you're in a state that is gonna require you to take tests in front of teachers, mm -hmm. you need to keep all that stuff, and I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. when, when our eldest son, David, went to join the Army, we said he's homeschooled. Here's and his diploma. Here's his diploma, which we're legally allowed to give right. them. Here's his transcript. And they're like, scratch, scratch, scratch. What right. do we do with this? We have no idea. He didn't come from a public school. And even though the law is on our side, they just didn't get it. So, and same thing happened with our son, Jonathan. And then same thing happened with our daughter, Claire, getting into college. Mm -hmm. But by the time we got to Claire, we figured it out. And, and you have to keep meticulous records yeah. because they're going to want to see did you pass social studies? Did you pass, did you have enough credits? Did you, did you have enough math credits and science credits and history credits? And did you cover the right, um, you know, world history, American history, uh, US history, ancient history? Did you cover all four of those histories? Yes. Yes, And he, but here's the thing. You gotta learn the laws of where you're at because they're different. And I'm saying that because Wisconsin law says that if we issue, as homeschool parents, if we issue them a diploma, <coughs> it's the same equivalent diploma as a private academy, mm -hmm. which means they can go to college, they can go in the military, they can do anything they want, but the problem is you've gotta get the other party to understand that it is the law. So that's why the records are so important. Records are super important. Um, you know, when um, when we moved here, um, we wanted, well, Jonathan and Claire wanted to go to public school. Well, Because it was high school last was, year. You last know. year, last couple of years of high school, I said, sure, it's a small town. We what can monitor what they're doing. We can monitor what could be the harm, you know, what, could, what harm could it do. So... <sighs> For them to be, for their homeschool credits to be accredited to them as actual credits that go towards their diploma to graduate from that school, they had to be tested. Which they didn't need to be legally, but we no. submitted to that even we though we didn't to that. need to. Exactly. Um, well, Jonathan has never been a great test taker, so he didn't do very well. So they didn't count any of his credits. So at record the, keeping. Well, I had I had all of that. But I they showed them everything. They still wouldn't accept it's it. It's because they have their apple, which is their curriculum, and we have our orange, which is our curriculum. Right. And they go, wait a minute, you this, don't have an don't you don't have an apple. apple. Yeah. Or this but is their, go, their 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 round hole and their square. Yeah. They don't but, go together. But then we say, but no, but we've got a really great orange here that we taught. Right. And they just go. You it don't have an match. apple. Right. Yeah, so that was very frustrating. Um, so keeping records. Keeping records is really, really important. Um, keep their schoolwork. Uh, I... <laughs> Our, we have a big dog. It sounded like an earthquake and it's See, the dog. <laughs> we have a big dog who's a St. Bernard and we're upstairs right now and she evidently took off downstairs. Down the stairs, yeah. It was like Boom. So, sorry. Um, I just thought there was an earthquake happening in Wisconsin. Um, keeping keeping their schoolwork. So I have a, a, a milk crate that I have file folders in. And each week, all of their work goes in there. So then I can keep track of what they learn throughout the year. Then at the end of the year, I take those and I put them into a box and mark it. This is 2021, 20 and 20, you know, whatever school year mm -hmm. it is, 2021. Um, and that way then if I have, if anybody gives me any pushback, push back, I can go to that box and say, okay, this is what, and I can pull out their stuff and you know, this is what they learned, blah, blah, blah. Well, and here's the thing, even though legally we could push back and say, you just have to accept our diploma. The reality is this guys, there's a lot of people that are just going to scratch their heads and they're going to go, but this isn't an apple. And, and even though we have the law on our side, mm -hmm. there it's going to be a hard mess for you to try to get get through that because you're going they're going to just go, well, you didn't do what we wanted you to do, wow. and 
and you don't have to, and you could fight back. You can absolutely fight back and say, no, I'm sorry, you have to accept this. Uh, and then you're going to have to go through a fight right. most times. Right. So you can do that, or you can keep records. Just keep records. Keep in daily attendance. Oh, speaking of that, with records, uh, each state requires a certain amount of hours that you need to teach in a year. Mm -hmm. And they require a certain amount of courses that need to be taught and what courses and what courses need to be taught so mm -hmm. that's something else i i should have said no earlier. i think we hit on that i don't but the point is with this you'll have proof that you did it exactly it'll be just done you'll be like here it is right and never give them the originals no because you'll never get them back copies make copies yeah Okay, moving on. Um, this one? <laughs> yeah. Now, here's the deal, guys. Um, and I can tell you this, and I'm going to let you in on a little secret. You're going to have bad days as a teacher. It's just going to be. Mm -hmm. so for whatever reason, life will happen, and little Johnny is bouncing off the wall, or Karen over here just is not understanding 2 plus 2, and you've done everything, and you're pulling your hair out. You're going to have... You've taught her 50 ways to Sunday, so yeah. You, you've, you've, you're going to have bad days, mm -hmm. and you're going to need coping mechanisms, and I do not mean, like, chemical coping no, mechanisms. No, not, not the chemical kind, no. No, no um, but you're going to need days where you can call up a friend mm -hmm. and just vent. Or, or have a play date. Like, get together. If, you're, uh, if your friend is another homeschool mom, get together. Do an outdoor nature walk. That is a huge release of any irritation that's going on or stress or whatever, but just getting outside. And if it's winter time, watch a movie that relates to your history lesson. Yeah. You know, give yourself some time to breathe. Because to breathe. So, you're you know, going to hit the wall. Yes. Trust me, I've hit the wall many times. Don't I know it? And I come and I'm just in tears. She's not doing what I need her to do. And and she's like, okay, just go. Go watch a TV. Go well, watch and a I'll, I'll jump in at that point and be like, all right, you, you just go take a nap or whatever right. you need to do. And he'll, and he'll go have a conversation with the kids. Yeah. Yeah. Be like, are, are you really being respectful? Right. You know? So, you know, this goes back to the very beginning of our of our video. It's not just mom that's doing the homeschooling. Mm -hmm. It's dad too. Dad's got to be on board. Dad's got to be supportive. And if you guys are not in unity, you're going to have a problem. You're going to have problems. It's going to be a huge fight. You've got to be in unity. And something we have said for forever that if we don't both agree, it just doesn't happen. Yeah, the big decisions in life. Right. That if you and I are not in agreement, like, right. do you think so? Yes, I think so. Yes, too. Then we then move ahead. Move forward. Because if you don't, if one person's like, I don't agree with this, then what happens if it falls apart? I told you so. Oh, it's just a mess of I told you so. It's and it's not healthy. Pulls. It's not healthy for your marriage. Mm -mm. You know, if there's that stress of I told you so or that bitterness, you mm -hmm. know, having being on board together is super important. Well, and not just mom and dad, but the curriculum. Mm -hmm. That's a support. Yeah. Finding a support group. Yep. That's a support. Right. Finding all those, you know, and we joked here, but like one of your coping mechanisms that's not chemical. Well, it's kind of chemical. No. Is Reese's peanut butter cups. Yes. <laughs> Chocolate. So if you if you need to go. Just be alone for a few minutes. Grab a Reese's cup on the way out. Dad'll deal with this, yep. and and also don't try to be something you're not. Right. And and by that, what I mean is this: is that I teach the kids music. Mm -hmm. Why would she? She's I, she doesn't got a musical bone in her body. I can't, I can't teach music to save my life, dude. I can play the radio, and that's it. Okay, I can't read music. I can't even keep time. And so, I love, I love, I love like World War II history. Yes. Like I just have always loved it. Yeah. So it'd be kind of silly for her to try to, to teach that when I've been doing that my whole life. Well, and the funny thing is, is I've become, I am beginning to really love history through the lessons that we're learning. And then we get to watch history documentaries. And now the kids are loving history, which is huge. Mm -hmm. So huge. But, you know, just... 
I guess overall, uh, as a summing up here, mm -hmm. I would have to say that um, getting started in homeschooling is uh, can be daunting, but it doesn't have to be. No, it does not have to be. It's just understand that your main goal is the education and upbringing of that little adult, yes. not a child. Right. You're not raising a child. You're raising an adult who needs to function among other well, adults. You, raise, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> Huh? You got it. He's a child, adult, yeah. No, it's, it's, well, yeah. no. They have to function with other adults, and they need to be able to communicate with other adults. And eventually work or own their own business or be a mom. They have to live in the world. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, they can't just live in your basement forever. It just, I'm sorry, does just doesn't work. It's illegal in most cities. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. You know, it... It's had, incredibly had, rewarding. It really is to for our kids to be able to go out and get married and be able to take care of their spouse. Be productive. And be productive people in society. That's a huge thing for me. You know. You know, and not just, you know, book learning. It's life learning. You know, teaching your kids how to cook and clean and and They don't do that in public school anymore. They don't do that. They don't there's I, no I home think ec. there's very few schools that actually have a home met class mm. you know you can't just send them off to school and expect them to be functioning adults in in society sorry that's not happening even right now yeah well so the encouragement is you can do it you can you're gonna have to be organized or get organized right and um just google lots of things ask a lot of questions right. paperwork Paperwork, record, keep records. You don't also, you don't have to have a college degree degree to no. homeschool. Uh, it's not necessary. So you don't have a teaching, you don't have to have a teacher's certificate to teach homeschooling. You just have to love your kids. And be willing to put in the time. And be willing to put in the time. Because there is time involved. Right. It's an extra job. Yes, it is. It is not this part-time thing. It is a full-time job because... Once the kids are done learning, I still have pep record keeping to, to do and, and grading to do to make sure that the kids are not falling behind and, you know, moving on into a lesson that they don't have the concept of. Right. So, yeah. All right. So go get them, Tiger. Yep. You got this. You can do this. You can. Yep. So there it is. I'm Brad. I'm Krista. With the Big Family Homestead. Yep. You guys have a, a, an amazing and blessed day.